What's up guys, this is Cops, checking our public servants, and what you have on the screen is the Wikipedia, including the awards and honors of a man we'll refer to as KM for this video. This information was much more difficult to find today than it was eight months ago when I first researched it. According to Wikipedia, KM was an American biochemist, and in recognition of his invention of a technique that we'll refer to as the picker technique just for this video. He shared the 1993 Nobel Prize in Chemistry with Michael Smith and was awarded the Japan Prize in the same year. His invention became a central technique in biochemistry and molecular biology, described by the New York Times as highly original and significant, virtually dividing biology into the two epochs of before picker and after picker. KM's invention of the picker test plays a crucial role in all of our lives today. Because according to mainstream media, picker is the gold standard and most sensitive test when it comes for testing to testing and diagnosing people for CV19. And based off of this article written in December 1996 by John Lordston titled Has Provincetown Become Protease Town? We get a little insight on KM's thoughts on another bug as well as his thoughts on his picker technique that he invented. KM is thoroughly convinced that this bug is not the cause of this. With regard to the viral load tests, which attempt to use picker for counting bugs, KM has stated, quantitative picker is an oxymoron. Picker is, is intended to identify substances qualitatively, but by its very nature is unsuited for estimating numbers. Although there is a common misimpression that the viral load tests actually count the number of viruses in the blood, these tests cannot detect free infectious bugs at all. They can only detect proteins that are believed in some cases wrongly to be unique to this bug. The test can detect genetic sequences of bugs, but not bugs themselves. Hmm. So what does KM say about his picker test being used to detect and test and really diagnose people with CV19? Well, we will never know because unfortunately KM passed away August 7th, 2019. But I think it's pretty safe to assume that his stance would be the same, that it cannot be used to detect for any bug. Now, shout out to Mexican Righteous for giving me this next clip, but this is KM in his own words, straight out of his mouth, calling out Tony Frotzi for the scam and for the incompetent person that he is. Enjoy. What is it? What What is it about humanity that that that, that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face. Nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine, and he, he should not be in a position like he's in. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people, and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda, 
They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. Like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. You can't expect the sheep to really respect the best and the brightest. They don't know the difference, really. I mean, I, I like humans, don't, don't get me wrong, but basically there is a, there is a, there's a vast, the vast majority of them do not possess the, the ability to judge who is and who isn't a really good scientist. I mean, that's a problem, that's a main problem actually with science, I'd say, in this century because the science is being judged by people, funding is being done by people who don't understand it. Okay, who do we trust? Fauci? Fauci doesn't know enough to, you know. If Fauci wants to get on television with somebody who knows a little bit about this stuff and debate him, he could easily do it because he's been asked. I mean, I've had a lot of people, president of the University of South Carolina, ask Fauci if he'd come down there and debate me on the stage in front of the student body because I wanted somebody who was from the other side to come down there and balance my, because I felt like, well, these guys can listen to me. But I need to have somebody else down here that's going to tell me the other side. But it was, she didn't want to do it. Wow, guys. Right out of his mouth, it sounds like he's talking in 2020. But this appears to be sometime in the 90s. Powerful video here, guys. Please share it with everybody. And we're going to end, we're going to finish this off with just a few examples of KM being right on point and just some, just some clips of Fraudsy, Tony Fraudsy being exactly that, being a liar. What the penetrance of infection is in any given way, I think that's yeah. going to be very important because the virus is being spread throughout the country by people without symptoms. So we've got to go beyond the symptoms. Wait, I'm sorry, what did you just say? Trends of infection is in any given way. I think that's yeah. going to be very important because the virus is being spread throughout the country by people without symptoms. Oh, so it is. Wait a second. You, but you said this. You said this about asymptomatic carriers. And guys, I'm not making an assertion. I'm not making a statement. I'm just asking a question. But he's saying it's being spread by people who are asymptomatic. But he said this. Uh, what's this? Back in uh, September. It's not very long ago. To just add one thing that seems to get lost in that question is that, as Bob said, and I agree, we would really like to see the data because if there is asymptomatic transmission, it impacts certain policies that you do regarding. He said, if there is. Screening, et cetera. But then he says. But the one thing historically people need to realize. Okay, the context is historically. Okay, what's the scope of that history, sir immunological god? Even if there is some asymptomatic transmission, in all the history of respiratory born viruses of any type. In all the history of respiratory born viruses of any type is the context. In all the history of respiratory born viruses of any type, that's pretty all pervasive. That, that's pretty all inclusive. Asymptomatic transmission has never been the driver of outbreaks. If that's true, then why would you want a broad brushed, broad spectrum, low sensitivity test to blanket the entire country? If that's true and they're being consistent, then that makes no sense to me, in my opinion. What do you guys think? The driver of outbreaks is always a symptomatic person. The driver of outbreaks, he's using, he's using um, uh, solid language. He's saying always he's using what, what is that? Always and never what, what absolute he's using absolute language. The driver of outbreaks is always people who are showing symptoms. What the penetrance of infection is in any given way. I think that's yeah. going to be very important because the virus is being spread throughout the country by people without symptoms. So we've got to go beyond the symptomatic people and we got to go beyond the symptom. Oh, you may look well. And this puts, this puts a suspicious spotlight on everybody, guys. This gives them an out. Oh, Anthony Fauci said, yeah, you came here and go, hey, look, I'm asymptomatic. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You may look well, but the dragnet includes you. You don't have to have a sniffle. You don't have to have a sore throat. You don't have to have an elevated temperature. 
You could look perfectly fine. Perfectly. You look healthy, I know, but <laughs> the immunological God said, and I'm going to finish it off with what he says right here. Always a symptomatic person, even if there's a rare asymptomatic person that might transmit, an epidemic is not driven by asymptomatic carriers. See, like Tony Fauci does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. Right now in the United States, people should not be walking around with masks. You're sure of it, because people are listening really no, closely to this. Right now, people should not be walking. There's no reason to be walking around with a mask. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better, and it might even block a, a droplet, but it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask, and they keep touching their face. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask, and they keep touching their face. And often, there are unintended consequences. People keep fiddling with the mask, and they keep touching their face. And can you get some schmutz sort of uh, staying uh, inside uh, there? Of course, and... of course. But when you think masks, you should think of health care providers needing them and people who are ill. What adds up to us suppressing the virus? It seems to me that the masks are one, right? Dr. Redfield testifying yesterday, even saying, look, this is almost as important as a vaccine in terms of mitigation. Do you, you agree with him on that, correct? Well, I think there was some misinterpretation about that. What Dr. Redfield was saying, that until we have a vaccine, masking, physical distancing, avoiding crowds is the public health proven way to go. I wouldn't want to be comparing efficacy of a vaccine right. versus a mask. There are two independent ways so, that we want to synergize with each other. So, I mean, as I'm talking to you, I almost want you to break fourth wall and say, like, do you, is there a Donald Trump on your shoulder that you're running this through? Because obviously the president has said no. things. I mean, the, the president has said, like, he says a lot of people say masks don't work. And, and, and he's ridiculed people for wearing masks. And I guess my question to you is, like, the science does say masks work, right? Like, this is really important that people wear masks. And when we see big crowded events of people not wearing masks, that's not good. Chris, I have been crystal clear for a long time <laughs> yes. in what I've been saying. I don't think there's any ambiguity of what I've been saying. Masks are important. They're effective. Combine it with physical distancing, avoiding crowds and washing hands, and it works. End of story. It's true. What no about question about that. You're like Tony Fauci does not mind going on television in front of the people that pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. 